Richard Dick Lionheart loved his entire country. In fact, he loved them so much that they in fact loved him in return and gave him a youthful potion letting him last to the youthful age of 180. He loved them so much that he appropriated with so many people he created a ton of heirs to the throne. Unfortunately, he is now passed on, and what is left is a ton of bastards in search of becoming king. In this game of the royal bastards, you're going to be taking the place of the king by trying to uh, gain the throne, and to do that you need to gain a control of the most area by getting the most points. Each player is going to get a bastard, a champion, and a herald, and they're going to buy for the throne. The player with the most points at the end of the game is the winner of this crazy party area control game. Let's go ahead and take a look at it down below and I'll show you everything included and then we'll go ahead and show you around and play. Royal Bastards is a party game for two to eight players vying for control of the area of Jodas. And as you can see, it comes with a ton of things. Let's talk about all the things it comes with. Uh, there's eight player bags for eight different players. You can choose any color that you'd like. These are all the tiles that are also magnetized to the point where they connect to each other and stack on top of each other. It's a nice way for scoring as well as for placing them down. These are all flags, which basically are going to can be used for battles that happen throughout the game. You're going to have a contest tracker along with the three different seasonal trackers and this little guy here that moves through all nine different turns of the game. There's contest cards which basically are used during battles and then there is a player board which will show your bastard, your champion, and your herald. There are skeleton cards on one side that are the negative cards in the game that can affect your players in a terrible way and there are the fortune cards which will affect your characters in a positive way. All the characters have these little stand these here that show the difference between them as well as give their names and then the cards in the game the bastards of the game which are all the characters you can choose from the skeletons and fortunes which we talked about previously on the player board and then chaos cards chaos cards are basically instants that will take place throughout the game as you play them you'll be able to drop to three and you can use them for certain things sometimes they'll let you gain bonuses to your attack or additional tokens you can place down to buy for control and other things like stopping cards from happening in the first place so ton of reference cards and bonuses to your roles as well as a first player marker and that's pretty much the end of the game other than just the rule book and the box itself. To set the game up you decide how many players and for this example we're just going to go ahead and show you two so it's a good it's easy and you'll understand how it's played. Every player is going to take one of these boards here they're going to take three bastard cards and they're going to select one of them to be their bastard and place it down on their board. Each player is going to do that with three different cards and place them down. Additionally, for this specific setup, you're going to be taking a skeleton card for each character, as well as selecting a fortune card randomly for each character. When these cards are flipped up, they are going to in fact become in effect, but as they stand now, they don't do anything. Each player is also going to get three random chaos cards that they can go ahead and play on their turn or other players' turn, depending on what they say, reference cards, and then everybody's going to get equal amounts of these little tiles here. And basically, the player is, so we'll have a player on the left and the player on the right, each have these stacks. The player who has Jodas City is the one who goes first. You're going to go ahead and set that down on the board. Let's go ahead and see if I can find Jodas City. These guys are all nice and thick, which is kind of cool, and they're all magnetized. Ah, here's Jodas City. That player is going to take the first player marker, so we'll say that this guy is the first player, placing down Jodas City. Then every player in turn order is going to place down a tile, making the board. And you can go ahead and place it anyway as long as they connect one and one back and forth until the entire board has been built and you can kind of build it in any way you want but to make it easier on you guys i'm just going to simply build it so that way it fits on the screen after the entire thing has been built and this thing can get actually rather large let's see actually quite loud as well i'm trying to pull these guys down then the game is pretty much ready to go. Each of the bastards each have their own unique starting area as well as the champions and the heralds. Okay, there we go. And so you're going to actually take the standee that is equivalent to that specific character and place it down on the board. I just gotta go ahead and find them. There's a dwarf character and then there's the Donnie. All right, let me see if we can find it really quick here. There's one and there's the other. Then you're going to take the standee and each of your bags is going to come die as well as come with tokens or chits that you're going to be able to utilize. So with the white player, we'll have Donnie and he's going to start 
in the swamp. So you can look for the swamp on the board or dust swamp as, <laughs> as to what they call it. All right, where are you swamp? Uh, that's the one. And then with the black player, let's go ahead and dump all these guys here. He's going to be Fergus, the dwarf. And the dwarf says he starts at the Twin Peaks, which is, or Twin Spires, which is right here. That is pretty much set for the game. You're going to have everything in, that, in this bag that is going to be next to you in your area and what you're going to be able to utilize. And uh, everything else is ready. You're going to go ahead and set this marker to one, which is the beginning of the game, and have all the rest of the cards available for the players to take when they need to take them. After you've done that with all of the players, you're ready to play the game Royal Bastards. Okay, let's go ahead and go down below and I'll show you a round of play so you get the idea of the game. We'll come up and I'll explain the seasons, talk about the different events that take place, how you win the game, and then my review. So here we have Royal Bastard set up for two players, and as you can see, we have red and blue. I changed it so it's easier to see the colors. The only thing is, uh, the red player has his tokens here and the blue has his tokens here. Otherwise, though, this is the red player's area and this is the blue player's area. Over here is the board that is complete, along with the character and its starting location for each player. You start with one character, but at the end of the game, you should have three characters, and you'll be moving them around the board just like you normally would in a normal turn. This is going to start on the one tracker, the battlements are over here, Chaos Cards Contest characters are going to be utilizing, and then Fortunes and Skeletons on the side. To begin the game, it's pretty simple. The player who started with Jota City is the player who's going to get to go first, and we're going to go ahead and use Fergus as the first player. The characters all have their own stats. So this one has a Might, Magic, Mastery, and Move. Move is how many spaces you can move, and the rest of the stats are going to be used for battling, and that is because contests are going to have different requirements for them. Some of them will be Magic, others Mastery, and even some Might. The characters also have a starting position and some kind of uh, class and or race, so a Dwarf Noble, for instance. And there's three different ways your turn can go. The first thing is you can simply move and then you're going to be done. Uh, you move all your characters. And then the next player is going to do the same, move and be done. Now, uh, this is one result that can happen. So he moves here and he moves here. If that were the case, then the blue player is going to drop two of his tokens on the space that is basically unoccupied and the red player would do the same. If instead this player walked over here, a battle is going to take place. And I'll show you how a battle works. Basically, you're going to draw a contest card. You're going to reveal it, and then you're going to read it. This one says that all trolls get plus one to their roll, and this is going to be a magical contest. So, for instance, he's got a magic of one, and he has a magic of two, but Donnie is a troll, so he's going to get a plus one, meaning making it a two. So both of these guys have a plus two. If there's any other bonuses, you'd add those as well. The uh, fortune cards start up face up. So this one says it gets plus one support token for any magic contest that this guy participates in. And this one over here is a steed that gives him plus two movement. So instead of his normal one movement, he'd actually be able to move three. But that is how it works. So each player is going to roll their die based on their character. Bastards get a d10, a d and the champions get a d8, and the heralds get a d6. In this case, they both just have a plus two, unless they want to use any chaos cards, which they can if they want. Uh, placing extra supports, target emissary gets minus three magic. So we'll go ahead and show you one of these. This guy is going to play this card, which says an emissary, which they are all emissaries, all the bastards, champions, and heralds are emissaries. Gets a minus three for combat in magic, so in which case he's at negative one now. And he doesn't want to use any of his chaos cards, so they're going to just simply roll. So this is a plus two and a negative one. He rolls a nine, and he rolls a nine as well. In which case, nine minus one is eight, and nine plus two is going to be... 11, which is going to stomp out Donnie. So blue is going to win this. Uh, there's an additional thing with bastards. When you have a d10 and you roll a zero and or 10, it is a crit and you get to roll again. So that can be of use. But nevertheless, the Fergus wins. And Fergus is going to get to do whatever the first place says on this contest card. And it says, place three support tokens on this territory. So this player is going to get to place three. But because he has that fortune, he gets to place one more, making it four. And this is how you control areas in the game. Uh, the second place is going to get two tokens in the territory, so red would get two. And if we're playing with a more than two player game, every play player, other player that didn't take first or second is going to get to use the L, which is the loser. Place a support token on the territory. Not everyone likes your new friends. Target rival emissary uh, to your left gets plus one movement to the next movement phase. 
So that can actually make a lot of people move a lot farther. After that, this contest has been burned and it has been taken care of. Additionally, when you have contests, when you're fighting, uh, because there's gonna be multiple players, multiple contests will happen, you're gonna place these flags down. Once their contest is done, you're going to remove the flag. And that's pretty much how it's going to work. All you're going to do is move, place down tokens if there's nobody there, or place to or place a contest and, and perform that contest if there are people there. And then first, second, third, or last place are going to resolve. And then after that, everybody's taken their turn, we'll move to the next round. Now the next round is where we do the same thing again. Players are going to get to choose to move. Additionally, the first player marker is going to go to the next player, meaning that Donnie's going to get to go first. And he might want to go over here. And the reason why they're going to move on different spaces here is there's different numbers in all these spaces. The higher the number, the more points at the end of the game you get. These are the points that you're going to get at the end of the game, and whoever has the most is the winner. So right now, this uh, dwarf Fergus is winning because he has four points because he has the most support tokens in this specific area. He's going to go over here. Thusly, he's going to go ahead and put two down here, and Donnie's going to go ahead and put two down over here. And at the end of this turn, now we have the dwarf with three plus four, which is going to be seven, and Donnie has just this one, which is worth five. Moving on. Now we're going to come to these colors here. You have green, yellow, and orange, and those are all going to do something different. They're like festivals. The first one and the second one are played pretty simply. You're going to go ahead and draw one of these cards here, and you're going to uh, go ahead and set the all your all the characters to that specific area. So this one says Orkland. So both of these guys are actually going to go to the Orkland. Let's see if I can find it right here. And then there's going to be a contest that happens after you draw an additional card for each player in the game because more characters are going to go into your tableau at the end of this contest. Flip over the contest, roll the die based on the stats, winners. Uh, are going to get to do something interesting. Instead of looking at this card here for the winners, you're actually going to look at this board here based on the color. First, second, and third place will get to place global support tokens, and lo the loser will also get to do so, or losers. So let's just say that, for instance, Donnie took first here. He's going to get eight global support tokens and first pick of the champion, which means that he actually can place eight tokens anywhere he wants on this board here. So if he wanted to do this, he could. Four, five, six, uh, seven, eight, nine. But then the second place, Fergus, we get to go ahead and take six global support tokens, and he can place them down wherever he wants as well. Ah, there we go. Three and three. And so everybody else would resolve that. And that is basically how those turns work. They basically become serious battle royales in which everybody takes place in. Then after that, you can obviously pass the first player marker. And then the player who won first is going to get to choose a champion. So we'll just go ahead and say that he wanted this one here. And he wanted this one here. You're going to take those champions and place them on the spot that they say they go. For instance, Fiona goes in the Orc land. And this one over here uh, is Libby is going to go to the valley. And you're going to place them down. And then on your turn, not only do you move your one character, Character, but you move your other character as well based on their movement. Certain character, depending on the, the, the champion or herald, just whether or not you're going to get fortunes and or skeletons. And then you're going to move on and play the game until you get to this yellow area in which you rinse and repeat the same process. Then you gain a herald. Each of the characters is going to get their own unique die, like I said. And if multiple battles happen with multiple characters in the same space of your color, you'll actually get to use both of the die in order to roll to fight. The final battle brings everyone to Jota City. Everyone goes there, you flip over a contest, and you perform that last fight, and then afterwards you tally up all the points on the board, and the person who has the most points is the winner. If there are ties in certain areas, you're actually going to perform contests for each of them to see who wins in that, in that, in that event, and if there's still somehow a tie, you'll actually just go ahead and flip over a uh, card here, and basically whoever has the highest stat in that specific contest is going to be the winner of the game, but in general it's just going to be based on points at the end of the game. It's rather quick pretty simple as you can see if you were to just go ahead and guess that you'd see that blue is going to have all these areas at the end of the game and red would have all these areas whoever has the most points is the winner uh chaos cards like i said before at the end of every turn you're actually if you have less than three you're going to draw up to three so you're always going to have three at the start of your turn and some of these are used anytime some of them are used during a contest and they'll just tell you when you're going to go ahead and use them some of them are actually used at the end of the game to remove certain support tokens and whatnot Anyway, I think that's enough for you to get an idea of how to play the game Royal Bastards. As you can see, it's kind of a area, well, it's an area control game, but it's also a party game in the sense that you're going to be moving characters around and doing certain things by dropping your attack cards and whatnot. There's a bunch of
bunch of craziness that ensues. Even in a two-player game, there's some craziness, but the more players, obviously, the more craziness. Anyway, let's come up and talk about what I think about the game and whether or not you should go ahead and pick this thing up down below on Kickstarter. All right, so some caveats before we get started with my review. And the first thing is, let's talk about some of the cards because we didn't go through a lot of them. Like, for instance, contests. I talked about one, but let's talk about a few more. These three uh, are different contests that are gonna take part in the game, where basically if you have one, uh, more than one character in a specific area, when you wanna place down a support token, you have to go ahead and do these things. This is a magical one, and these two are mastery ones. If you win first place in this one, you're gonna get three support tokens. In the second place, two support tokens, plus blowing off your eyebrows is going to hurt your chances later. Target emissary gets minus one to the roll for the next contest. You'll be using those minus one things. And then finally, there's a one support token for this one but they are all fairly similar in how they function with slight differences in the terms of it's usually three two one but sometimes there'll be minus ones plus ones and whatnot and it's always going to be based on the numbers you're going to be using to fight so in mastery if your character has a two in mastery and then it has a special bonus of plus two then you're going to be using that as a plus four and against your die roll uh let's go ahead and talk about chaos cards such as Magical Vortex. When you replay this card, target emissary may move to any territory. So basically a free flying movement. Magical, magical Toll. At the end of the game, all rivals subtract one royal approval point from their total score at the end game. So everybody loses a point. Or at any time, you can just, just discard this to draw two new chaos cards. Potion of Strength Contest. During a contest, target emissary gets plus two for their might. Quicksilver. Discard one additional chaos card to get plus two movement this turn. You can play it at any time. And then let's talk about Free Spin. Target player rolls a d6. On a one or two, you draw chaos. On a three or four, you draw two. And on a five, draw a fortune. On a six, draw one chaos and one fortune. Fortunes are great when they come into play, flip them over, and they do something interesting. So let's talk about some fortunes. If you get a brother from another mother, it's going to give you plus two to all your stats, and you're going to add it to your character that you'd like. Maybe a lucky devil, which means that your bastard can now roll a crit on a nine or a ten. Pretty useful, especially when you have a treasure map, which says every time you crit, you get to add a fortune card to your bastard, which means that you're going to get more and more and more. Maybe your stool doesn't stink, which means you get plus two support tokens for any contest in elf areas. Or three sisters fortune tellers, plus four to your magic, and you can reroll any uh, magic contest once. Not so bad. Now what is bad though is skeleton cards. For instance, a the Drain the Swamp Literally card. You get minus two support tokens for any contest in any gray areas. These cards are obviously going to be flipped up by chaos cards. So flip over a, a specific skeleton card on a specific player. Ah, dang it, now I have minus two to any area that has gray territories or Donation Corruption. When revealed, discard this card and a fortune card from your bastard. So you're gonna lose your good card when you flip this guy up. You never wanna reveal skeleton cards if you can help it. Feeble-minded, minus four magic and minus two mastery. Agoraphobia, get minus three to rolls in contests when you have two or more rivals. So you don't wanna be too clustered in. These are all negative effects. You are trying to avoid them as best as possible. But that's pretty much it. Otherwise, I think you have a good idea of how the game works. All the characters are pretty much just four stats no specific passives on them themselves they are going to change based on the skeleton and or fortune cards that they have but otherwise they're going to have some variation of about seven or eight points on them for mastery magic might and movement all right what do i think about this game this game is an area control game at its heart but it's also a party game. And why do I say that when it's not technically a party game? Well, because in this game, there's a bunch of craziness ensuing. It's very simple as how it is played and you're just gonna be rolling die and calculating your numbers and whatnot, but it's not full chance because Yes, you may lose your die roll at certain points, but you're not losing enough to where you can actually, you can win the game even if you do not roll well throughout the entire game based on how you place your tokens down. Because there's so many players that can be in this game, craziness ensues and where you're placing things down. The first player that wins each of the contests in for the main seasons can drop those support tokens anywhere and that gets the board all kinds of cluttered. So you're starting to do all this counting, oh, I don't want to go and whatnot. You can make this game as complex as you want as far as making sure you get the best bang for your buck, or you can just throw down. Nevertheless, it's a good time. The skeleton cards affect players in some terrible, terrible, funny ways. All of the cards have hilarity attached to them. I laughed 
out loud more than once while playing this just in a two player game. Fortune cards are so beneficial and you want as many as possible, so playing chaos cards is kind of incentivized in this game because you're always drawing up. You always want to play as many chaos cards as you can, or maybe save some really good ones for the very end, but some of them are definitely better than others, but not too much better. It's all pretty fair as far as that goes. Uh, one thing I can say about the game in a negative way, I suppose, is there is a lot of counting and the big the longer the game gets the or the, the farther in the game gets the more like okay you have three there and you have four there and i need to place two there and so it gets a little monotonous as to how you want to do that but if you don't f focus on it that much you just go okay i want that area in that area in that area it goes a lot faster so for those of you who have that kind of analysis paralysis maybe not something for you because you're going to take this way too seriously this game is about having fun and throwing down tokens in my opinion now it can be played in either way that you want but for me just playing the characters and seeing how everything works and roll a die and getting those lucky crits it all adds up to some really funny and really great feeling moments the artwork is fairly good in this game i like it it's kind of reminds me of like 1990s video game style artwork. The characters and all that have some kind of funny text on them and you can go ahead and read all of them with all their different flavor texts. This one is Libby and she says, quote to be added, oh, well that doesn't work, quote to be added later, that's because it hasn't been added yet. Let's see if I can find an actual quote then. Uh, you best not toss me by Eldridge. That's a dwarf, obviously, so has some plays with Gimli, G G Gimli right? Uh, only the dead have seen the end of my magic, Willie the Slick. <laughs> Uh, the contests also have their own unique little aspects to them. And even the fortunes and what I have their own. Here, Agoraphobia, this one says two's a company and three's a crowd, right? Uh, so it has that, that humor involved in this game. Anyway, if you like party games, but you want a little bit something deeper, a little thicker, a little, little lengthier, but not too much more complex, you're going to enjoy this game. If you're looking for a more meaty, heavy strategy game, it's probably not for you. It's going to be somewhere in the middle. It's a medium weight game. I really enjoyed my time with this game, and I definitely think this one should be funded because there's definitely an audience out there. This is one of those games where I want to play on my live streams, and in fact, if I have some time and I have the game still, I'm going to play this on my live streams to show you guys how much fun it can be had when you play with four, five, six, and even seven or eight players i guess if you can play eight uh yeah you can play eight which i don't even know there's gonna be craziness going on so we'll try and get that happening i i really do recommend this game if you want to go ahead and take a look go ahead and down below in the description it's probably on kickstarter by now and i would definitely suggest you take a look at royal bastards a game about this dude who had way way too many kids and for good reason all right guys thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review Royal Bastards, take a look at it. You like comedy, you like a little bit of crazy partiness, and you like area control, this is gonna be up your alley. Check our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of giveaways, board games, all that kind of stuff. I'll have some new giveaways up. They're all down right now. Sorry, it's, it's been a crazy, crazy week. But you can go ahead and check out our live streams. We're giving away games every week on Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. PST. If you like watching us play games like these, go ahead and do that. It's on Facebook, facebook.com slash UR. URNG, just look up Unfiltered Gaming, you'll find us. As well as take a look at our friends, everythingboardgames.com and the Giveaway Geek. They give away a ton of great stuff, even more than my own site. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to being very much like Richard Dick Lionheart. I mean, he's, he seemed like such a great guy.